Huh. What the heck is that noise? Oh crap. Not again. Overflowing. What's up YouTube? Handyman007 here and today I'm going to show you how to make your own water tank level indicator so you'll know when to fill up your tank and exactly when to turn off the faucet. That way you can say goodbye to incidents of overflow, save money, and reduce your risk in climbing up and down a ladder just to inspect the water level. As always, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon to get notified of new videos I upload. And with that, let's roll up our sleeves and fix stuff in and around your home today. Here are the materials that you would need. Some string. Um, even better if you have a nylon string. Whatever you do, do not use any uh, material that can be easily corroded by water. Like, you know, metal chains or whatnot. So it, it should be something that can be immersed in water for, for a long time and will not corrode. For this project, I'm actually using um, 300 milliliter um, bottles. You can use water or soda um, bottles, plastic bottles, um, anything that can hold water and can be sealed airtight. And then of course you'll need a pair of scissors and your trusty measuring tape. The first step is to have some sort of mark, right, a visual cue that would say you know, that the, the, the tank is already full of water. So what I did is to grab a permanent marker and drew an arrow here and an F, which stands for full, right? And you want that arrow to be just before the very bottom of your water tank, right? And this is where our indicator would need to line up. The next step is to stick some sort of holder, right? That would um, keep your string in place. I actually got this from a, a an old doorknob set lying around. So this is the plastic part of that doorknob set. And it's perfect because it has this U uh, crevice that will prevent the, your string uh, from from moving to and fro especially when when your faucet is turned on and the water is slushing around so that would create a lot of disturbance so this um, holder would keep your string from moving about so I just use um, a super glue, uh, very strong adhesive to stick this on. As you can see, it's very sturdy. It won't move or budge. I did think of drilling a hole um, through this tank to mount the holder. But as you can hear, it's a very thick tank. Okay, And I don't have a strong enough drill bit to drill a hole. And besides, that would damage the integrity of your water tank so it's safer and easier to just super glue this on the next step is to grab your measuring tape and measure the length or the height of the water tank from the brim all the way to the mark that you drew that you drew earlier and as you can see, it's about 29 inches. It doesn't have to be that accurate, right? So it's 29 inches. Um, you want to write down that measurement on a piece of paper because you'll be needing that in the next step. Ideally, 29 inches of string would be perfect. But you have to remember, we are not dealing with two-dimensional objects here. So we have to account for other um, factors that we need to include in our measurement. 
such as my holder here, right? Um, it's not really flat against the the tank, so I need to factor um, the the width of of the holder. So it doesn't again, it doesn't have to be accurate. Uh, so I'm just gonna estimate it at about three quarters of an inch. So I'll just peg it at an inch. And in the end, when we finish with our water level indicator, when it says the tank is full, I don't want the actual water to be, you know, all the way up to the brim. So we are also going to factor that in. Um, when in full, quote unquote, I would just like the water level to be about, you know, two inches uh, below the brim. So that would be about here, two inches. And finally, you also need to account for the size of um, the, the float and the counterweight that you are going to use because that's where you'll have to tie your string um, around on. Now, since I'm using water bottles, right, uh, and I do plan to tie the string around the neck of, of, of each water bottle, so what I need to know is the circumference of, of the neck or at least this bottle cap. Um, so there's an easy trick to do that because since I'm using a, a measuring tape, right, it's really hard to wrap around. Take your string and wrap it around the neck. Like so. All right. And then just remember the end of that point right so this is this represents the circumference of your um, bottleneck and now it's easier to measure it with your measuring tape so it's about three and a half um, inches long and since I'm going to wrap the uh, each end of the string on two bottles I have to multiply the the measurement by two so three and a half times two is seven inches and we will keep note of that too so now let's take inventory of all our measurements um, and I've prepared for you a simple um, spreadsheet here so the height of our water tank if you recall was 29 or is 29 inches the circumference of our bottleneck each is 3.5 inches and since we're going to use two so we double that which gives us seven inches and the thickness of our string holder is one inch and lastly the inches below the brim when full uh, if you remember that's our buffer is two inches so when we add them all up that would give us a total of 39 inches and this is the number that we need to remember so this will be the distance between the two um, bottlenecks now I also would like to include some sort of buffer to the string or a string allowance of five inches on each end so if we double that, that would give us an extra 10 inches. So we add it to 39, which give us, gives us a grand total of 49 inches. And that is the length of string that we need to cut. So you might be asking, what is the string allowance for? Well, it's going to help us tie the string around the two bottlenecks a lot easier. And it will make more sense when you see me actually tie the string around each of the bottlenecks, uh, bottlenecks later. For now, what is important is we need to cut um, a 49 inches of, of string. And then once we do that, uh, we make sure that the distance between the two bottlenecks is exactly 39 inches. I hear you. I know it's hard to actually measure a string, 
when you don't have a buddy to hold the other end. So uh, a neat trick that you can do is tying one end of the string onto something like your gate or, or, or something solid would make the job much easier because now you can pull the string taut without anyone else holding the other end and this makes it much easier for you to measure uh, in our case to measure 49 inches of string after you've measured 49 inches of string and cut it um, on the other end now it's as easy as nipping this end to stay true to 49 inches now the next thing that we need to do is mark 39 inches exactly in the middle of this 49 inch string and the best way to do that is you hold together right you pinch together both ends of the string like so and then stretch it across to the other end so this would be that would be the exact middle of your string now since we kind of divided our string into two right because we folded it then we need to divide 39 inches by two as well so that would give us about 39 divided by 2 is 19.5 inches so what you're going to do is measure 19.5 inches from this end so from the 19.5 inch mark on your tape measure I'm going to hold that still and then stretch your string all the way to the very end and then pinch this part that aligns with the tip of your tape measure and then the next thing that you will do is mark that spot So now you have an easy way to tell what part of the string at each end should touch the tip of, of your um, bottleneck, which I will show you in a bit. Now let's go back to our bottles and you have to decide which one would you assign as the float and which one as the counterweight slash water level indicator. So since I have um, two different colored bottles, I would like um, the indicator or the counterweight to be brighter and easily seen from a distance. So I'm going to choose this green bottle as our weight indicator slash counterweight. And notice that I also swapped their uh, bottle caps because red can be uh, easier seen from a distance instead of white especially um, if you remember that our water tank is kind of silver or gray so a gray background uh, imagine it's a gray background here red will stand out just fine so this one here would be our float um, just don't forget to clean your water bottles especially for the float uh, because you are going to immerse this in water inside the tank now for the float you need to fill it, fill it up with water, about 75%. Um, just make sure that you have enough space where air is trapped so that when, when you put this on water inside the tank, it will actually float. For the counterweight, I just put you know, very minimum water inside it because I don't want it to be too heavy. Remember that once you put your float inside the tank the buoyancy effect of water inside the tank will actually make the weight of your float consider considerably less and that is why you don't need your counterweight to be equally heavy as your uh, float and now we tie one end of the string around the um, bottleneck and this is the time that you need to check your mark and make sure that the knot 
terminates on that mark. So you need to make sure that your knot terminates on the mark that you did. Right now, you don't need to make a fancy knot. Just tie the knot as you would your shoelaces. Using a simple knot would make it much easier to undo it later on as we do the testing and if it requires us to recalibrate the length of the string. Now let's do the same approach to our counterweight. After tying both ends of the string to your bottles, it's time to test them out. Place your float in the tank, position the string across the crevice of your holder, and just let the counterweight dangle outside the tank. That's it. So right now, our indicator is way past below our full mark. But remember, we did account for a 2-inch buffer because we don't want our water level to actually touch the brim. So what I'm going to do is um, drain the tank somewhat until it reaches 2 inches just below, uh, below the brim. And we'll go back here and check if our uh, bottle cap would align or would be very close to our full mark. As the water drained out the tank, our level indicator slowly rose up and away from our full mark. This is a good sign that the weight of our float inside the tank is just right. By the way, I ended up adding more water inside our float so that it sinks deeper because we want the bottle cap as flushed as possible to the tank's water level in order to have an accurate reading. I decided to drain the water way past 2 inches below the brim so we can observe more distinctly how our counterweight slash level indicator outside would behave as we fill up the tank. I also drew a mark exactly 2 inches below the brim as our reference for later. And so with a little time lapse magic, let's see how everything falls into place. As we hope for, our indicator slowly goes down, 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 which tells us that the weight of our indicator is enough to make our float constantly hug the inside wall of the tank, which otherwise might just float aimlessly causing an, an inaccurate reading. And as our red cap lines up with our full mark, let's climb up and check if our actual water level also lines up with our 2 inch buffer mark inside the tank. And it does! This turned out better than I expected. Perfect! Now you will always know when to turn off your faucet and prevent overflows. As the indicator goes up, Towards the brim, it means water in the tank is going down towards empty. And as the indicator goes down towards the full mark, it means water is rising towards the full tank. I no longer have to climb a ladder every time I just need to know how much water is actually in the tank. So let's do one final check and see if our indicator is visible from a distance. Well, the video might not give it justice, but from the naked eye, it is very clear even from afar. Perfect. So that is how you can make your own water tank level indicator with practically common items. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. For more videos like this, hit that subscribe button and notification bell down below so you don't miss out. Watch for my upcoming videos where I show you how to make your own water tank lid and how to install an automatic water shutoff valve. This is Handyman007, wishing you the best in your DIY projects. See you again in the next videos.